In this video, I'm going to talk about how to, to design the right size holes for 3D printing. A common problem that 3D printing enthusiasts run into is that the holes that they design in CAD are undersized when they're finally printed. So you design something to be five millimeters in diameter. When you print it, it's not five millimeters. It's smaller than that. So in order to design the right size hole in CAD so that it turns out the right size and the actual print, I printed one of these combined 3D printer uh, combined calibration tests. I don't remember who made this particular model. I found it on Thingiverse. I know that this is a smaller version of a bigger model. They do take a few hours to print, but they have a ton of information about... They give you a ton of information about how your printer performs. Uh, just a quick overview uh, gives you your X, Y, and Z dimensions over here, which I still leave to a calibration cube. There's a stringing test here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what this is for. I haven't quite figured that out. Over here is a bridging test, so you can see how well your printer can bridge. Uh, or, you know, do overhangs. Well, no, yeah, bridging. Um, at different lengths. And there's the overhang test, which tests your printer at different uh, overhang angles. So that way you can judge at which angle uh, your printer still retains quality without supports. So there, there's a bunch of things you can figure out from this. So, but the main thing I'm here to talk about is, is uh, hole diameter. So down here, are the hole tests and these holes are supposed to be a certain size set by the model but when it's actually printed they aren't and you check that uh, by using calipers on each of these holes now with this small model it's a little hard to actually measure the sizes of these holes uh, it's doable i managed to do it just fine uh, with, a, I guess, a little bit of difficulty. But that's what you do. You measure the diameters of these holes, the inside diameters, and you also measure the dimensions of these square holes. And you know, that's, that's how you find out how much your printer or even your slicer software, I think it's usually at the slicing software that the dimensions get screwed up. Uh, I know that with my experience with Cura, I believe that the shrinking holes are usually related to the uh, wall thickness setting in Cura. And I know that Cura also has some kind of a hole size compensation setting, which I don't run because I, I don't want that setting to apply to all of my holes. Some of my holes, I couldn't care less uh, what their diameter is. And, and I just feel like it's best addressed at the CAD end. So I take the information I glean from this, these measurements to figure out how much my holes are shrinking from CAD to the print and factor that into my actual design stage. When trying to figure out how much to correct for hole shrinkage, I put my test elements and their actual CAD measurements in a spreadsheet. So as you may recall, in the combined test model that I printed, there are round holes and there are rectangular holes. And each one of them has a set CAD measurement. And the way I have this spreadsheet, the way I have this spreadsheet set up is I compare the test measurement to what I actually measure with the calipers, figure out what the difference is between the measurements, and take that raw difference information and use that to apply to my CAD designs to compensate for that hole shrinkage. So for example, the round, the 4mm round hole is actually 344 millimeters on the print. The 3mm round hole was 2.47 on the print. The 2mm one was 1.49 on the print. And they were consistency, they were consistently around a half millimeter smaller than they should have been. So in this case, my highest measurement here is 
0.56 millimeters difference. I I usually I I take that and I round it up to 0.6 and I enlarge all of my 3D printed holes by 0.6 millimeters, maybe sometimes 0.7 if I want a little bit of wiggle, a little more wiggle room. Uh, depends on what I'm using it for, I guess. Uh, if if I'm gonna pass a bolt through it, I might bump it up to 0.7 or 0.8 millimeters uh, that way the bolt can pass through freely if it's a peg I might just I'm, if it's a friction peg I might just keep it like 0.6 maybe even 0.7 that way there is a bit of a snug fit in that hole curiously the rectangular holes actually have a smaller deviation in each of their dimensions than the round holes whereas the round holes were each off by about half a millimeter uh, the rectangular holes were each off by about 0.2 millimeters, so there's a little less compensation needed for rectangular holes, but it's still needed. So, in, in this case here, if I were to do a rectangular hole where I really cared about its size, I would bump each dimension of that hole up by 0.2 to 0.3 or 0.4 millimeters again depending on what I intend to pass through it so and again I prefer to do all these compensation adjustments right in the CAD I don't really prefer doing the catch-all solution and Cura I just rather account for it in CAD have it dimensioned and noted as needed and when it passes through the slicer and through the printer everything will come out the way I want it. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons below. Also, post any questions you have in the comments and I may answer them in another video. And remember, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. So keep learning, keep designing, keep making, and be proud of your work.